Hello people and welcome back to the RDF Tactics YouTube channel. My name is RDF. Today's video we are going to be looking at Sergio Constant South 442 at FC Porto. It's intense, it's creative and it's also tactically intriguing. So we're going to analyse it, we're going to recreate it in Football Manager. It would be hugely appreciated if you guys can hit that like button as well. Help this video increase its reach, hopefully it can be useful for other people as well. But just for the sake of YouTube's algorithm, please could you guys smash that like button. Check this out. I'm proud to announce that the RDF Tactics YouTube channel has teamed up with OneFootball. It's a great footballing app, if you haven't tried it out before then make sure you do, it's free so why not, you have nothing to lose and the link is in the description below. My personal favourite thing about the app is receiving the latest news, transfer rumours, tracking live scores but also and of course getting match stats so I can make videos just like this one. There's a video section as well, it's a pretty cool app where you can watch football highlights, historic moments and even post or pre-match conferences. I'm currently using the app to receive news on my favourite team as you have the option to do so. It's a really good app to get your daily football updates and football news. So give it a go, it's completely free and I promise you, you won't look back and remember, the link is in the description below. The ex-Porto winger Sergio Consensao took control over Porto in June 2018 following Nuno Espirito Santo's departure who had been unable to win the Portuguese league as Benfica went on to win their fourth league title in a row. Things weren't exactly running smoothly at the time for FC Porto who had just received a fine for failing to comply with the financial fair play rules. This seemed to not affect Sergio Consensao in the slightest though and in his first season in control he went on to win the league ending their five year wait. His success didn't just stop there, the following season he won the national double, the league title again and the national cup. Fast forward to the 2020-21 season, Sergio Constancao continues to impress nationally and on the club's football's biggest world stage, the Champions League. Though they are currently second in the Premier League behind an all-spiring sporting side, they are still in the UEFA Champions League and progress to the quarter-finals after knocking out the two-time champions Juventus. Porto under Sergio Constancao have played 206 games, winning 147 with an impressive 71.36 win rate. Here's a tactical analyst of how that has been achieved. Sergio Constancao frequently shapes up in the 4-4-2 system, an aggressive system where he expects his team to be direct with their approach and transition with a high tempo. Like most modern coaches, Sergio Constancao uses a high and intense press which proves to be effective in a 4-4-2 as Porto can remain compact vertically making it difficult for their opponents to play through often forcing backwards passes. This press is well oiled and often the two strikers will trigger the press by closing down the opponent's defenders on the ball if they opt to play out from the defence. This would then be followed by a central midfielder who could also block the route for the opponent's number 6 collecting the ball and then the wingers will also begin their press high when the ball is worked out wide. To avoid gaps appearing as the 5 man press, the rest of the team would move forward to make sure they stay condensed vertically and this also helps prevent Porto's pressing from being bypassed by a more direct ball. With this pressing set up, FC Porto tend to dominate games by making it hard for the opponents to play but also when on the ball, Sergio Constancao encourages quick short passing. In the Premier League, Porto currently has the second most average possession, 57% and the second best pass completion percentage, 82.1%. They also face the third lead shots at goal with 8.8 .8 shots conceded per game, demonstrating how difficult it is to create scoring chances against this FC Porto side. Because of their narrow shape, this also helps their side keep possession after the ball has won, as now their players are positioned closer to each other for a passing option. Going forward, Porto have been one of the positive teams, if not the most, in the Premier League. They have 14.4 shots per game at goal, which is the most whilst having the most shots on target per 90, 5.6, getting a 1.6 xG per 90. Attempting the second most dribbles in the league with 21.4 per 90 indicates they don't just want to keep possession for the sake of it and all about finding ways to create chances. 
their 442 shape often looks more like a 424 as Porto advance, or even a 4132, with Sergio Oliveira being effective getting forward and is now currently decides top goal scorer. The central midfielder scoring 11 goals in 22 matches when this was written. However, what remains is a holding midfielder in front of the two central defenders attempting to win the ball and protect the team against counter-attacks. Against the better sides, Sergio Oliveira would often reduce his forward runs and also help with his midfield partner in protecting the back four. The opponent's wide players often have a tough time against FC Porto due to Porto's wing movements. As the fullbacks advance higher up the pitch, the two wingers then tuck inside to create that 4-2-4 shape, making any marking or tracking very difficult. The wingers move into the channels and that then forces the opponent's wingers to tuck inside, which then opens the flanks for the Porto fullbacks. If the opponent's fullbacks then decide to press or engage in Porto's fullbacks, this can then open space for either striker, depending on which side the ball is on, to move into the channels, stretching the defence. This also allowed FC Porto to gain a superiority in wider areas effectively. The centre-backs are less likely to leave their defensive positions to track a Porto striker as that then will leave a gaping hole in their central defence. The central midfielders are key to the system. They have to cover a lot of ground for Porto, making sure they can both protect and prevent counter-attacks. But they, or at least one, will also need to support the attacking players and be the link from the field to attack. The strikers also need to be physical players who can work for the team during the 90 minutes as they are key to setting Porto's pressing tempo. So it's clear to recognise that all players need to have great physical attributes for this system to work to a great effect, but communication is also key. With the high pressing and fluid movements, players need to be in constant communication to avoid situations where Porto can be caught out. Mateus Urab has been the size ball winner and is important in disrupting play, winning 2.4 tackles per 90 and completing 1.7 interceptions. His midfield partner Sergio Oliveira also plays an important role in winning the ball, completing 2 tackles per 90. The wingers on the ball are very capable dribblers. Right back Manafa completes the most dribbles per game with 2.3 dribbles per game, closely followed by Otavio, Jesus Corona and Luis Diaz. Jesus Corona, Otavio and Sergio Olivero are responsible for injecting creativity in their side with their passing. Often choosing to play risky passes to unlock defences, no surprise collectively, they have 14 assists between them, with Jesus Corona completing 2.5 key passes per game on average. Lastly, it's the two central defenders Mbemba and Pepe who have a lot of possession during the game, indicating they're instructed to build from the back, with both completing 89.2% of their passes, with Otavio also being key in the size build-up play, averaging 50.9 passes a game which ranks him third behind the two central defenders. But that wraps up my tactical analyst, looking at Sergio Constant South FC Porto, hoping they can put on a spectacle in their Champions League quarter-final tie with Chelsea. Though I did record this on the 8th of April, meaning that the first leg was actually played yesterday, with Chelsea winning 2-0 in the first leg. So, of course, the second leg is going to be very difficult for Porto, but still, there's hope and Porto are a very good side. We are now going to go into Football Manager 2021 to look at my replication. So here we are in Football Manager 2021 and, and as you can see Sergio Constant sells 442. Now there is two versions slightly. We have a Sergio Constant Sal 442 where you're expected to dominate all the games, or you have a Sergio Constant Sal 442 beat the press, where you are up against better opponents who are going to press high. So it's mainly trying to beat the opponent's high press. But I did mainly use the dominate even against a very good size, especially in the Champions League. So we're going to start off with the player roles, the team instructions, look at the results and then close the video. In goal we do have the sweeper keeper on the defend duty, he has no instructions. The left back is a full back on the support duty, he's instructed to pass it shorter, cross aim to the far post, run wide with the ball, get further forward and stay wider. 
the fullback on the right is with the attacking duty he's instructed to pass it shorter cross aim into the center dribble more run wide with the ball and stay wider the reason why the left back has cross aim to the far post is as you can see we have attacking duties on the right hand side so when he gets down the byline or chooses to cross from deep we are going to have some runners coming in from deep on the right hand side so that's the theory anyway when he's looking up to cross make sure to look at the far post because we have the pressing forward on the attacking duty and the inside winger on the attacking duty in central defense we have a central defender on the defend duty and a ball playing defender on the defend duty just providing a nice balance in central defense on the left we have a wide playmaker on the support duty where Otavio would be playing he's instructed to dribble more but he's going to be your side's main creator on the right hand side we have an inverted winger on the attack duty this would be Jesus Corona so he's instructed to take more risk as Jesus Corona would do and he's also going to sit more narrower and allowing the attacking fullback on the right get further forward and do his thing in central midfield we have a central midfielder on the attacking duty which would be Sergio Oliveira our goal scoring midfielder he's instructed to shoot more often and tackle harder to engage in a tackle and his midfield partner is a ball winning midfielder on the defend duty up top we have two pressing forwards one is on the support duty he's instructed to roam from his position and move into channels again he's roaming from his position to allow the central midfielder to get further forward and hopefully exploit the position that he's now vacated so effectively the central midfielder could be occupying the central forward spot if that situation manages to happen his striking partner though is a pressing forward under attacking duty but he has no added instructions. There is no set piece routine added as well so there's no need to check out the set pieces. For the team instructions the team mentality is on attacking. The attacking width is set to narrow as narrow as it could be with this mentality the approach play we do have overlap on the left side mainly because it's a fullback on the support duty he's not going to get further forward as much as a fullback on the attacking duty the fullback on the attacking duty also has get further forward so automatically he is going to get further forward and look to overlap on a higher frequency but we do want the fullback also to overlap on the left hand side as the wide playmaker is going to be looking to cut inside so we want the left back to get further forward and overlap we are also going to play out from the defence, the passing directness is on much shorter. We are going to be keeping possession but with our possession we are going to be playing at a high tempo trying to get the ball further up the pitch as well unsettling the opponent's defence. In the final third we are going to be whipping in our crosses and we're going to work the ball into the box also running at the defence. In transition when the possession has been lost we're not going to counter press or regroup when you are playing against the better sides you can then regroup but by default we have no instructions there when the possession has been won we are going to be making our counter movements of course trying to exploit any space that we have just now created goalkeeper in possession he is going to be distributing it to the fullbacks by throwing it long when we are out of possession FC Porto like to defend much higher so that is exactly what we've gone for we've gone for a much higher defense line alongside a higher line of engagement the defensive width is set to narrow so we are going to force the opposition on the outside we are using the offside trap pressing intensity set to more urgent prevent short goalkeeper distribution and get stuck in so it's a fairly aggressive system but it's also creative and it did very well defensively which we are going to see now with the results so in the competitions you can see in the Liga Nos we managed to win that, we played 34, we won 29, drawing 3, losing 2 with a goal difference of 70 and ending up with a point tally of 90, absolutely fantastic. Musa Morega was our top goal scorer in the league with 18 goals, Sergio Oliveira was the highest average rated player and he also provided the most assist in the league. For the Taka de Portugal placard, I'm hope i'm pronouncing that right we managed to win that for the super tackle candido de Oliveira. And you know what i'm just going to be butchering all of these trophy names but for the super cup i'm guessing we also won that and the alliance cup we managed to win that as well so in total we actually won four cups we won the quadruple but in the champions league we got knocked out in the first round by fc barcelona which there is no surprise and no embarrassment whatsoever but if we check the group stages and see how we performed in the group stages, we can see that Porto played 6, we won 5, we drew 1 and lost none. But in the league we are going to check some of the stats. 
So for the goals, we scored the most goals in the league with 85 goals. We managed the most points per game with, with 2.6 points per game. If you round that up, that's three points per game. We had the most shots for in the league. We had the fewest shots against us in the league. The best pass completion goes to Sporting, though we finished fourth with 90%. And we had the highest average possession with 58%. Most tackles won, we wasn't in that list. Most dribbles made, we were on that list, but we finished top with 118. We had the highest or most clean sheets and the fewest conceded. For the player overalls, we didn't have the top goal scorer, but our top goal scorer did finish second, Musa Morego with 18 goals. Most assists goes to Angel Gomez, but Sergio Oliveira is there with 12. Musa Morega is also there with 10. Most shots goes to Musa Arega. Most man of the matches, Musa Arega is there with joint fifth with five. Most key passes, Sergio Oliveira with 109. Pass completion, we have Diego Liette with 97%. And Melang Sar is there with 96. Tackles won, we have nobody. Most dribbles made, again, we have nobody. So it's more of a collective thing rather than an individual. For the most clean sheets, we have our goalkeeper, Murchison, with 22 clean sheets. And he also conceded the fewest. So for the team report, for the attacking efficiency, you can see that we were aggressive in our approach, but we were kind of bang average in the middle between wasteful and clinical. So we could improve on our shot conversion rate, though we did have an insanely amount of shots per game, which obviously doesn't help. If we were more clinical, then we would be scoring a hell a lot of goals. Defensively, for our defensive efficiency, we were quiet and impenetrable, by far the best defence in the league, literally by far. But how do we score most of our goals? Most of them came from play shots, 38, 15 from powerful shots and 12 from headers. With the assist, 21 came from free balls, 18 came from crosses, whilst 8 came from free kicks. So, in the squad, who were the top goal scorers who had the most assists in FC Porto? Morego with the most goals, 25 goals in 39 appearances. Sergio Oliveira with 16 goals in 37 appearances. So our central midfielder was our second top goal scorer. Philip Anderson managed to get 13 goals in 23 games. Luis Diaz got 10 goals in 38 games. Mehdi Tarami managed to get 10 goals in 31 appearances. For the assists, Sergio Oliveira with 17 assists in 37 games. Musa Morego with 13 assists in why do I sound like I just repeated that? Sergio Oliveira with 17 assists in 37 games. Musa Morego with 13 assists in 39 games. Manafa with 12 assists in 27 games. Philip Anderson with 8. Luis Diaz with 6. Otavio with 6. And also Chancel and Bemba with 6 assists. So. For the training, when there's one match during the week on the Monday, it's all about match tactics, possession and team bonding. Tuesday, we're going to defend from the front and transitional press. Wednesday, attacking direct and match practice. For the Thursday, attacking movement, delivery from corners and, and all of that stuff. Maybe that's why we scored 10 from free kicks. Who knows? Chance creation also on the Thursday with Friday's teamwork, Saturday's match, Sunday recovery and match review. When there's two matches during the week on the Monday is transitional press, attacker movement and team bonding. Tuesday is teamwork before the match on the Wednesday. On the Thursday we're going to do a recovery with a match review. On the Friday is teamwork before the match on Saturday and then Sunday is a recovery and match review. But that wraps up this video unfortunately. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you are new or you haven't yet make sure you are subscribed. Make sure you like this video and also make sure you leave a comment with any suggestions. It's been enjoyable recording this video for you. I hope it helps you out in your saves. I will see you soon. Make sure you stay safe. Peace out.